This video will change your life forever. If you don't have an open mind or aren't ready for a complete transformation, just go ahead and click away right now. I'm gonna start by asking you a question. Who's in control? Simple question. Might take you a while to really think about it and soak it in. But again, I ask, who's in control? Let's think about when you were a child and you would come home from school, right? And you would see your parents. What's the first thing they would tell you to do after school, right? They would ask you to do your chores, right? Why, would, why are they asking you to do your chores? Because they know that if the house isn't kept, there are certain things that need to be done because if the house isn't kept, you're going to have rats running around, you're going to have mice running around. So they tell you what to do. They tell you what needs to be done around the house. You don't spend any time thinking about that. You're not worried about the consequences of an unclean house. So they tell you, hey, Jimmy, hey, John, hey, Cindy, hey, Sophie, clean the house up. Do your chores. Clean your room. Take out the trash. Wash the dishes. And at that point in your life, I ask you, who's in control? Okay, now I want us to fast forward into high school, right? And I want you to imagine yourself graduating from high school. You're on your last day of graduation. And your parents come to know your graduation. And the day after, you guys are discussing what schools you want to go to, what are the next steps. And they tell you what schools that you should go to based on your skill set and your knowledge and what you're good at. They recommend to you what schools you should go to based on the schools that they went to and their experience at those schools. They recommend to you what schools you should go to based on the financial incentives, which ones are giving you scholarships, which ones are not, how expensive one school is versus another. And you go to a school based around what other people are recommending for you. You don't go to the school that you pick out of your own volition, you take in all this information from the people who are influencing you the most in your life, friends, family, and even some a girlfriend or a boyfriend, being close to home, right? So I ask you again in that scenario, who's in control? Then I fast forward while you're actually um, in college, right? Let's imagine you finally graduate college, whether it be a two-year or four-year university. And the moment you graduate college, what are people doing? They're telling you what job you should get based on the degree you have. Why are they doing that? Because they think they know what's best for you based on your skill set, your knowledge, the school you went to, right? If that school has any connections with a particular workplace or for a particular position. And they tell you what you should go and do with the rest of your life, where you should work based on the school that you went to, based on the degree that you have. And you take their recommendations and apply to the jobs that they say you should apply to based on your degree and your degree is based on the recommendation of the school that you were supposed to go to on the recommendation of your parents. So I ask you again, in that scenario, when you pick that job and you apply for that job and you get that job and you work that job, who's in control? Again, I ask you, when you finally start that amazing job that you worked four years and got into hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt for. And you're at that job. And on the first day of that job, your boss comes to you and gives you a list of the things that you need to get done for the day and for the week and for the month. Gives you a list of all your goals, your assignments, all the points you need to reach to stay on track what your quotes are, quotas, whatever you call it. So then I ask, when you're at that job and you work that job for one, two, three, four, five, six, ten years, who's in control? 
So the reason I go through all of that is because I want you to understand that throughout your life, you've been doing a lot of things for other people because that's what they want for you. I'll say it again. Throughout your entire life, you've become accustomed to living your life for what for other people and what they want for you. Very seldom, which means very ra- rarely, do you spend time thinking about what you actually want for yourself outside of what other people want for you. You're always thinking about what others want you to do, how others want you to speak, how others want you to think, how others want you to feel, instead of thinking about what is organic and original to you. What inspires you? What motivates you? What moves you? What makes you happy? How much time do you spend thinking about you? So why do I ask those questions? Because you sit here today and you wonder why you feel like you're out of control in your own life. You wonder why. You're confused why you get to the point and you're finally an adult and you feel like you don't know how you got to this point. You feel unhappy with the things that you're doing, the career that you have, the relationship that you're in, the person that you are. And you wonder, how did you get to this point? I'll tell you how. For your entire life, you've allowed other people to be in the driver's seat. You've allowed yourself to believe that other people know what's best for you. You've allowed yourself to believe that other people know what direction you should take in life. You've allowed yourself to believe that you're out of control of yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I mean? Because At the point you are in your life, I want you to look at all the decisions you made and really ask yourself, how many of those decisions were my decisions? Or was I making those decisions for other people? Because now that you sit here unhappy with the life decisions that you made, is it other people's unhappiness that you made the decisions for? Who has to live with that unhappiness? Who has to live with that regret? It's you. So then I ask you, right? In the situations I just presented to you, whose fault is it that you're in the place that you are now? And I know what answer you want to say, because what you want to say, is that it's other people's fault that you're in the position you are now. Because if they wouldn't have told you to do this, this wouldn't have happened. If they wouldn't have recommended you do this, this wouldn't have happened. If they didn't push you to do that, that wouldn't have happened. But I want you to realize the position you're in in your life is absolutely nobody's fault but your own. The moment you start taking accountability for your own actions, words, and feelings is the moment your life changes. I'm gonna say it again. The moment you start taking accountability for your own thoughts, feelings, and actions is the moment your life changes. I'm gonna say it one more time. The moment you start taking accountability for your actions, feelings, and thoughts is the moment your life changes because it is nobody else's fault that you are in the position that you're in except 
for you. You are in control. You have always been in control. There is nobody else in control of you. You are in the driver's seat. Your life is exactly what you choose to make it. Don't put yourself, don't pl- uh, con- uh, convince yourself that all these people who are successful, millionaires and billionaires, all these self made people who seem to quote unquote have sprouted out of nowhere and become overnight successes were blessed, you know, with opportunity that fell from the sky. Nobody, and I mean nobody, gets blessed with opportunity that falls from the sky. And even the people that get blessed with an opportunity can squander it if they don't take control. There is not a successful person on this planet that isn't responsible for their own success. You are unsuccessful because of you. I don't care how rich your family is. I don't care how poor your family is. I don't care how little resources you have. I don't care how much resources you have. I don't care the place you live in. I don't care the country you were born in. I don't care if you're not a citizen. I don't care if you are a citizen. I don't care if you moved 10 times or you stayed in the same city for your entire life. Your life is whatever you choose to make it. You are unsuccessful because you chose to be unsuccessful. If you wanted success and you really wanted to go after it, you would get off your butt and start moving and start taking action. Because without action, nothing will change. Absolutely nothing will change. And you'll consider, continue sitting here complaining about why your life isn't where it's supposed to be instead of moving and changing things you have the power to move mountains with your mind you have the power to change your situation or your circumstance with your mind it starts with your mind why does it start with your mind i want you to understand this at one point There was a man that said, I'm going to create light out of this thing called electricity. People were like, what's electricity? Well, it's like a transfer of energy. And this transfer of energy is going to allow you to see in the dark. People said, what? See in the dark? What do you mean? You're going to be able to see in the dark through a transfer and a flow of energy that creates light where no light exists. People said, uh, yeah, okay, sure. That's possible. Because at that point it seemed impossible. But there was someone that convinced themselves that this vision, this thought, this idea is a reality. And because that thought and idea was such an unshakable reality in their mind, they actually made it a physical reality. I want you to really soak that in. This thought in a, in a mind that seemed impossible in theory, that seemed like it would be magic or godlike. Became a physical reality that we understand today. And it started here. Before it was here. Before you could touch it, see it, or feel it. It existed here. When a man said, I'm going to create a system where I can be in North America. And I can send you a message in China. Halfway across the world, you will hear my voice in real time. And my voice 
will be transferred over waves. People said, what are waves? Waves exist in the air. You just can't see them. But you'll hear my voice in real time transferred over these waves. Without wires. Without anything. People said, sounds pretty unrealistic. I'm not rolling. And they moved on with their life. Imagine how many people said that's impossible. The only way to send a message is by writing it down and getting a horse to transfer it. And riding a horse, sorry, to that where that person is, where they stay, and physically giving it to them. There's no way you can transfer a message through waves. And when I explain it like that, it sounds silly. And it also sounded even sillier back then. But it was first a thought, an unshakable thought in the mind that one person had and became a physical reality that we understand today. So why do I give you those two examples? Because I want you to understand how powerful you are as an individual, how powerful your mind is, how powerful your mind is at creating the physical reality that surrounds you. You've convinced yourself that you're not powerful, but you are. You have more power than you can even imagine. One of my favorite quotes is, our biggest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our biggest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And it applies to you. Because you're capable of so much more than, than you could even fathom. But your fear is that you actually are in control. Why do you fear that you're in control? Because recognizing the fact that you're in control forces you to take responsibility for the place that you are in. If you're not in a good place, if you're in a bad situation, if you're in a situation that you want changed or you're, you're not proud of, the understanding that you're in control forces you to take responsibility for the position that you're in. And that, that doesn't feel very good. Which is why you pass off the blame on other people. You pass off the blame on your family, the way your family treated you. You pass off the blame on your finances, that you don't have enough money. You pass off the blame on your, on your partner because they don't do the right things for you. They don't say the right things for you. They don't make you feel the right way. You pass off the blame on your boss because he hasn't promoted you, because he hasn't given you the right position, because he doesn't use you the right way. You pass off the blame on your job because you're not working the right job. You're supposed to be working. You pass off the blame on your coworkers because they don't work well with you. Because they sabotage you. You pass off the blame on your friends because they are bad influence on you. They force you to do things you don't want to do. You pass off the blame on everybody else in your life but you. Because you are afraid of the fact that you are the creator of your own reality. There it is. You are the creator of your own reality. You decide how things end up for you. You decide what situation you're in, what circumstance you're in, what job you have, what kind of relationship you have. What kind of life you live. If you have happiness or not, you decide those things. You are the creator of your own reality. Where does it start? It starts in the mind. Because once you make that change in your understanding of the world that you live in, you walk around looking at everything as a possibility looking at the world literally in the palm of your hand because you are capable of doing anything your heart desires. So then the question becomes, 
What does your heart desire? Which is your second problem. You don't even know what your heart desires. You don't know what motivates you. You don't know what makes you happy. You don't know what your purpose is on this earth. We all have a purpose. We all have a skill set. We all bring value. You just have to figure out what your value is, and it's not making money. I'm going to say it again. Your value is not making money. I'm going to say it one more time in case you didn't hear me. Your value is not making money. Because a lot of you, I won't even say a lot of you, you specifically have convinced yourself that making money is your purpose on this earth. Making money is not your purpose on this earth. Making money represents financial freedom. Making money is not a purpose. You need to figure out what your purpose is outside of making money. This is the question I'll ask you. And I want you to write this answer down. So get your notepad out. Get your notepad out and write this answer down. Write this question down if you need time to think about it. If money wasn't an issue and you could do anything you wanted for the rest of your life, what would you be doing? I'm going to repeat the question. If money wasn't an issue and you could spend the rest of your life doing anything you wanted, what would you be doing? Because the answer to that question is going to tell you what motivates you and what brings you happiness. And from there, You can start shifting and changing your life to fit that vision. Because when you pursue that vision, the money will come. The money will flow in bucket loads. And your happiness will flow in bucket loads as well. Because you will be in the place that you want to be. And your belief in yourself And who you are as a person and your purpose will be so unshakable. Nobody can move you off that position. You'll have so much confidence in yourself. Your aura will exude confidence. People will approach you different. Because you're projecting out a different type of energy. People will treat you different. Because they feel different around you. They see the difference in you. They sense the aura that surrounds you. You are the creator of your own reality. So again, I ask you, who is in control? Because It's not mom, it's not dad, it's not your siblings, it's not your best friend, it's not your wife or your husband, it's not your girlfriend, your boyfriend, it's not your boss, it's not your coworkers. So again, I ask you, who is in control? 